Good morning. Uh, I haven't got a cup of coffee. Uh, we'll, we'll carry on anyway. Um, you'll see that it's looking quite bright, but it's been pouring the rain all morning, so I thought we'd, we'll come back inside and have a little inside chat. So I'm sorry the other day because things not just got late in the day. Uh, I had so many problems I couldn't even get it out that day, so it had to come out on Friday instead of Thursday. So you had Thursday off, which is not too bad an idea. One day I'll tell you a little story about something I learnt as an 11 year old, a 10 year old at school about having time off to clear your mind before exams. Another, another time. Three questions. There's a link between these three questions. So let me just start off today um, with a question from Paul Lewis from Campbelltown in Sydney, Australia. My question is a mental question. When playing with someone that really hits the ball hard and long, how do you put that out of your mind so as to still use the easiest swing? I've taught myself golf and stumbled across your method and love it, although I am struggling with consistency. But I know that will come. Now, Paul, consistency is something that we never achieve. So if you can be less inconsistent, you're making progress. Uh, the best players in the world are never always consistent okay so just be careful it's why in my book i spent so much time talking about our attitude to bad shots we have to accept them because they're going to be happening throughout our career you have good days and bad days but just when you think you've got this game it'll turn around and bite you in the yes okay what i will say about that um, is that i've had to learn by being in, in tournaments that I wasn't the longest, I wasn't the shortest, but I was, I was middling. So there were always guys who were going to hit the ball further than me. Didn't watch them. I would stand on the tee, so they'd be playing down the fairway like that. Um, and I'd stand there, look down the fairway. And I could see when their ball, and hear when their ball was hit. So I'd follow the ball and help them find the ball if I had to. But I didn't actually have to watch their swing. There were times when somebody's swing just upset my own rhythm because we somehow we absorb things that we see in others and sometimes it just puts us off so i don't actually watch them so um the other thing i would say is that i've i've probably had a bit of training in recent years certainly the last 20 years if not more my kid brother okay he's taller than me bigger hands heavier than i am hits it miles so he uses the easiest swing effortless but hits it miles so um you just learn you just learn brian stop trying to beat your brother and um, which is difficult because we are quite competitive and i'm the older brother i can't have my young kid brother beating me can i but you just develop a habit doesn't matter a long drive does not mean that they're going to win the hole and there's nothing better than you have the second shot first and you can put them under pressure when you've hit this massive long drive and you've got a simple shot to the green and the other guy's taking their longer shot in and they stick it quite close and then you miss the green, think about how they feel. So if you can flip it and think, how can I put this guy under pressure? The other little story I'll tell you about Lee Trevino. Um, and if you watch a lot of Lee Trevino, um, he was a great talker and a lot of videos with him talking about his career and a lot of very intelligent stuff. And one day he was doing a demonstration and at the end, when he'd finished, he said to the, the, the spectators, anybody got any questions? One guy put his hand up. Okay. He said, uh, Mr. Trevino, how, could, uh, how can I hit the ball further? So Trevino, intelligent guy, turned the question on the guy and said, what would you do to hit it further? Oh, he said, hit it harder. Trevino said, no, 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 no. Don't hit it hard, hit it better. In all ball striking sports, when you strike it well, when your timing is good and it comes out of the sweet spot, those are the ones that go further. And it's as true in golf as in, as in any, any other sport. Um, so, Paul, I hope that helps develop an attitude to it. I'm not going to worry. And just keep saying that, self to you. saying that to yourself all the time until it actually becomes a habit. Next question is from Larry Chopchik in Ontario in Canada who says, I'm a 70 year old here in Canada, just got back from Mississippi, from a Mississippi USA golf trip and got caught up in the coronavirus. And now I'm in home in isolation for 14 days. 
tried your easiest swing method and enjoy a better round of golf. Straight shots, better contact, but distance seems to be the problem. Want to know how to get more power for distance without giving up balance and finish? Because if I fall off the shot, it tends to go to the right. This is my seventh day of 14, 12 weeks, eh? Good luck and stay safe. Thanks, Larry. So, one or two little demonstrations there. Let's take La Danse de Golf. Okay, so hopefully we all know this. And that's quite a slow thing. I don't, I don't rush it doing this, do it. It's just a nice, lazy movement. But if I put this hand here, and you'll see the club and my hand are moving at the same speed. Okay, I'm just going to turn this over and listen to what's going to happen. So if I do this, no sound. And even if I start doing that, and certainly if I put all that effort in, yes, I'm getting this, I can hear it going through the air a little bit, but watch what happens here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start accelerating and you should hear a different sound. So has this speeded up a lot? And I think that's where a lot of people make the mistake. They think they've got to get that moving faster. And that moves faster, the club stays back there and then the body and the club never meet again. Which is why the finish is never very good. The finish is good when everything gets there at the same time. And it's quite easy. Okay, so, um, and of course using these things means that if I was to demonstrate that, so I can just be nice and smooth and slow, and I can get some speed. So people think that I can't hit the ball very far with a swing like this. But I can, because what I'm doing is I'm using my whole body, everything is moving, and then I've got a little bit of zip. I think in my books people tend to think that's the word impetus. Yes, that. it's a bat and ball game, you've got to give the, the ball a, a bit of serious headache at the same time. So it's not just this, and people do make the mistake of going back and going through and think, oh, I'm not allowed to hit the ball. Yes, you are, and the more relaxed you are, and the more you move your body, the more impetus you'll have. Okay? Uh, now the third question, excuse me, I'm just going to take a little sip. Thank you. So you know coffee today, just water. Okay, this question is from Ray Richardson from, uh, from near Grimsby in the northeast of England. Um, I won't, there's a long, long question, so what I will say is uh, I came on a course with yourself and Julian a while ago and loved the freedom of movement and thought it gave along with your book. Also, glad I purchased the swing right as it helped me a lot with my rhythm. My golf related question is similar to one I saw on your YouTube channel. Now had both knees operated on and something a bit more nasty. I know you can understand the joys of radiotherapy about the worst time of my life so yes good luck with that uh, Ray this is making the dance and the turning sometimes uncomfortable I know turning is one of your mantras but if you could look into the possibility of a more arms only type of rhythmical swing with a bit less turning it would be appreciated been trying it in the shed with the swing right with a little success but as you are the guru you may come up with something that I cannot stay safe stay positive Ray well, there's no problem there, I can assure you. Okay, so, one of the first things I think, Ray, is you've got to know your own body. You've had two new knees, you've obviously got some sort of, uh, sounds like you've probably got a tumour or some cancer somewhere. And if you're doing anything that's uncomfortable, that's not doing the... Re uh, recent radiotherapy issue is not helping that and it's not helping your knees so and it is difficult because I can remember the day that I started hitting balls again after my illness this is Hodgkin's disease in 1978 I probably started hitting balls again I was diagnosed in May and I probably didn't hit balls I finished radiotherapy at the beginning of September and probably start hitting balls again hmm, probably uh, October November 
very, very tentatively because I'd also had my spleen taken out, so I've got a rather long scar here. And one of the members, Paddy, always remember this, looked at me one day and he said, oh, you'll never recover from that. And I thought, right, now I've played, it hasn't hurt me for years. I was determined that it wouldn't hold me back. But at first I couldn't push it because it was just too painful. And the most painful things I've ever had in my life was waking up from that operation. So, um, you have to accept that maybe with your physical limitations, you won't hit the ball so far. What you can do is through that dance to golf, you can think to yourself, well, what can I do that's comfortable? And in golf, in the golf swing, if you're moving everything together, I don't think you actually have to turn 90 degrees as they talk about, although I don't like degrees. You don't have to turn a huge amount as long as you're turning and your arms and your hands and everything are working together, then that's fine. And that should help you with consistency and ball striking. And staying relaxed is absolutely fundamental. There's a, 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 an American a guy that I've coached and I've met him. He and his friend invited me over to Hawaii, which was fabulous. And I've met him at his home in Boston. And he's a, um, he's a surgeon hand surgeon and he's got two new knees and two new hips and he's waiting for two new shoulders he's now 76 he came over to france for some uh, coaching last year and met him again and he's playing the best golf of his life because he knows that he has to be totally relaxed and keep everything moving the danger is that we get a bit limited in movement get a bit tight because we're a bit anxious and try to hit the ball hard and that's going to hurt. He says that tension actually damages joints. So another reason to keep tension out of your game. So um, let me just see with the, yes, um, know your own body. And you have to play a little bit like I was saying to, about to Larry at, right at the beginning. Um, you've got to know your game and you've got to play your game. And if your game says, at the moment, because of what I'm going through, I can't hit it flat out, then fine. I think when you go through these sort of difficulties, especially radiotherapy, if you can be on a golf course with green grass under your feet, well, then it really is a nice day. So I hope those little things help. Please keep your questions coming. I've got at least another 40 questions, So, but, um, but I'm selective. I'll choose the questions that I feel are the most popular. Um, and the ones that are going to talk to most of you. So please keep them coming. I hope you're enjoying this. And uh, I please, uh, I do like some, I would like some feedback from you as to whether this is just too much information or if you think it's about right. Okay, many thanks and hopefully see you in a couple of days.